What up? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're being nice to yourself. I hope you're just being the best person you can be to yourself. Why was that so aggressive? Today's video is being sponsored by Bloomsbury, and today we're playing a little game of Keep or Sweep Book Series Edition, where I take unfinished book series off my bookshelf and decide if I'm going to keep them or sweep it off my shelf. Yeet them off my collection. Kick them out. Evict them from my bookshelf. I have been reflecting on the current state of my book collection. I'll be honest, I get this way every year around this time. The New Year's come in 2023. I see you. You're so close. How is it almost 2023? I want to throw up. Like, literally, I'm going to the toilet to throw up. I am the type of person where I see the new year and I'm like, it's time for a new era, time for a fresh start. Let's go, baby. And part of that for me is going through different things, including my book collection and assessing what things need to go, what can stay and all that jazz. I'm not gonna lie, a part of me has just been wanting to sell everything I own and just start over. Like literally, I wish I could just like, snap my fingers and start over. But I'm gonna hold myself back from doing that because I know that would just be an impulsive thing to do and I need to like really think things through. <laughs> I've always struggled with book series. This is a well-known fact about me. And there are some series that I have on my shelves where I just feel like I've been holding out on them where I'm like, I'll get to it someday. I'll finish it eventually. But the reality is it's not gonna happen. Wake up, Jesse. That more so appeared like I was slapping you. I, I meant to be slapping myself. Wake up, Jesse. Anyway, all this to say, I'm gonna go through my book collection, pick out the unfinished series from my shelves and decide if I should keep them or sweep them. I'm gonna try to be really real with myself, really think it through, and really decide if it should stay or if it should go. Let's do this. First up here, we've got the Defy the Night series. This video is in general was inspired by me actually following through with this series, so we're going to assess it first. That sounded so official, like we're in a business meeting. Let's, let's assess these assets here and see if we want to move forward with them. Okay. <laughs> Lord, help me be a normal person throughout this video, please. This series is about a plague that has broken out within this kingdom. And there's this moonflower that's supposed to help with the sickness. It's supposed to be a cure. But the thing is, it's scarce and very hard to get your hands on. Tessa, our main character, is sick and tired of seeing people being sick and tired. So she takes matters into her own hands by involving herself within the kingdom. But things are not as they seem when she gets inside. Things are a full-on mess. Somebody ring the alarm. Somebody find help because this is bad. And Tessa is going to do everything she can can to in some way sort things out. I loved the first book. It was instant hard eyes for me. Hands not wanting to leave the book. Mind consumed. That was my reading experience. And the second book managed to keep the momentum of the first book, which is not often a thing that a lot of people can do. A lot of times the second book hates second book slump. Sumpty Dumpty had a great fall. But this one managed to keep the momentum of the first book. It just brought a lot of new things to the table, bringing in new characters and broadening the landscape. My heart always just like sinks to the bottom of the ocean when a second book and a series just does not land, doesn't live up to the first book, this one managed to do so. The reason this one is even up for debate on if I should keep it or sweep it, because obviously you're listening to me talk about it and you're like, he loves it, so why is he gonna get rid of it? But the reason it's up for debate is because typically I am just not somebody who is very good at following through with books. Now this was the book explosion book of the month for the month of October. That kind of pushed me to stay on top of the series and to read it. But my fear is that book three will come out and I will not stick to it. Like, so far I've kept up with it, but I also recognize the fact that the reason I've kept up with it is because there's only two books in the series so far. But I think the thing that does also keep me coming back to it outside of it being a book club pick is that it's not a chore to read. Oftentimes, I'm gonna be a little real right now, I just don't vibe with writing styles within fantasy books. Sometimes I feel like they're convoluted and frankly, sometimes they go over my head. Am I a dummy? Mayhaps, I'll own it. This is not new information to you or me. But this series so far has been super accessible and super easy to get into. I just feel like Bridget Kimmerer does a good job of approaching the world building in a way where it just makes sense and it's easy to understand. And I don't feel like a lost lamb trying to find my shepherd as I'm reading it. Now it's time for keep or sweep. Do I keep or do I sweep? Am I gonna keep it? Am I gonna sweep it? I think we all know the answer. I think it's very clear and how I was talking about it. I'm gonna keep it for now. Was my gush fest a spoiler on whether I was gonna keep it or not? Probably. I feel like I can do it. I just need to have self-control. I need to just stick with it. When a new book in the series comes out, I need to pick it up and read it right away. It's a keep for me. I won't even make you guys pay rent. The next one that is up to bat. The next one that's up to bat. The next one that is up for decision. 
the Bloodleaf series. So far we've got Bloodleaf, we've got Grey Thorn, and I think there was another book that released in it, but I've been really bad at keeping up with the series. Are we surprised? No, we're not. I'm gonna stop even mentioning the fact that I'm bad at keeping up with series. We know this! We know. We know. We're done. No more. <sighs> okay, <laughs> moving on. In this book we follow Aurelia, who is a princess with a secret. That secret being she has magic within her, and magic in her kingdom is forbidden. So the day that her magic is revealed, Bye bye, princess. No, but actually the way her magic is revealed is actually like very dramatic within the book. Like there is an attempted assassination on her and she just like booms with magic and they're like, she's got magic, huh? Get on out of here, princess. We didn't want you in the first place. We tried to assassinate you. Now get out. It's like, whoa. Okay, okay, okay. That's kind of the situation here. This is a retelling of the goose girl, I want to say. I think that's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm wrong often, so wouldn't be surprised. I really enjoyed Bloodleaf when I read it. I haven't gotten around to great Thorn, so I don't know how the follow-up is, but the reason that this is even up on the chopping block is just because of the fact that, like, I enjoyed it, but it didn't stand out to me. It wasn't a story that made an impression on me, per se. It's not one that was super memorable. And not every book you read needs to be a standout to want to continue on with it, but I just think, for me personally, I would rather read books or series or commit to book series where I feel like they're going to leave a mark on me or where I know for sure that I will continue enjoying them. Bloodleaf was, like, a side character that was nice to have around, but never really made themselves know. The one thing that's kind of holding me back from just yeeting it on out of here is the fact that I saw its potential. I saw potential to where this series could go, and that makes me nervous that I could be missing out on something. I had every intention of moving forward with this series, but something else that really affects me when it comes to series is that the more time that I spend away from it, the harder it is to get back to it. So if I'm not consistently keeping up with a book series, like if a book is coming out within that series every year and I'm not reading that book every year, it's gonna be a problem because I'm gonna be overwhelmed by the amount of books that have come out within that series and getting caught up in all of that. Like, that is just hard for me. So I think for me, in general, there is a major lack of motivation with this series because it has been a long time since I've read Bloodleaf, and this has been out for a while, and again, I think there's another book in the series that has been released. Maybe two more. I don't know because I haven't kept up. I think had the first book had more of a wow factor, had more pizzazz, had more main character energy, I would of course be on board with moving forward. So keep or sweep. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going back and forth on this one more than I thought I would. Like, I was kind of like, I know what my answer is going into this one. But now I'm like, do I keep it? No. I said I was going to be really real with myself. That's what I said. So I'm going to be really real. I'm going to sweep this series. It's a goner. I enjoyed you when I read you. But it's time to move on. Next up here, I've got the Red Queen series. In this world, people are divided up by their blood type. We've got the reds and the silvers. Silvers are these elite beings, and red people are basically considered peasants. When Mare, a red blood girl, ends up working in the kingdom. She's at first like, shoot, I don't fit in with these powerful people. What am I doing here? But then as things move forward, she's like, oh dang, I have deadly powers that are like the silvers. <laughs> Mare has wrapped herself up in danger as she begins to work for the Red Guard, a group of reds working to take down the silver regime. I really enjoyed the first two books in the series. I know it's popular to hate on them, and I am all for the critiques of these books. Like, more times than not, I agree with them, but I still enjoyed it. Yes, it is jam-packed with tropes that don't bring anything new to the table, and the quality of writing might not have been the greatest at the beginning of the series, so I'd argue that it did improve quite a bit. Me loving the series is proof that you can love something and also recognize its faults. Anyway, my one problem that's holding me back from wham bamming my way through this series is that I've tried to read book three two times now. Every time I try to read it, I feel like I go into sloth mode. It takes me five hours to read five words. That's a lie, but it's it, that's what it feels like. In the moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, why is this taking me a million years? Tell me you're dramatic without telling me you're dramatic. Oop, I even have a bookmark in book three where I got stuck. I made it to chapter 15. <laughs> Book 3 introduces a new perspective, and it's not that I don't find that perspective interesting, because I do, but I feel like I'm getting to know this character while also the main events of the overall story are continuing and developing, and that for me messes with the overall flow. And I do think that this new perspective that's added brings a lot to the story and is necessary in kind of helping flesh out a different perspective or a different side of the story, but I have a hard time when I'm in it, staying in it, and keeping up with it. So I keep going back and forth with this series because I want to know how it ends, but I just have such a hard time committing when I'm in it. And it's like, when do I call it? When do I decide, yeah, this isn't going to happen? So with that information, is it a sweep or is it a keep? I'm 
quite literally in the middle here, and I think this is going to be a decision that I make down the line. I think what I'm going to do is give the third book one last try, give it one more attempt, one final attempt, and if I find myself not being able to do it, I think I'm gonna have to get rid of it, because I just don't think it's going to ever happen if that's the case. So for now, it's a keep, but it could eventually down the line be a sweep. I will keep you guys updated. I hope that didn't feel like a cop-out. Should I get rid of this? Maybe, but I just want to give it one more chance, one more shot. We all deserve one more chance in life, okay? Next up here, we've got the Grave Mercy Trilogy. This is like historical fiction mixed with fantasy. We follow Ismay, who has learned that the God of Death has given her a gift. She's given the opportunity to train as an assassin for the God of Death and live out the destiny set before her. This is another situation where I feel like I really enjoyed Grave Mercy. I really enjoyed my process of reading it, and I feel like this is honestly a trilogy that you don't normally see. Like, it's not like all the other girlies. There's this nice originality factor that it brings to the table. But anything you compliment and then follow with a but is never a good sign. It just did not come in swinging the way that it needed to in order to cement it as something that I would like to pursue. As a reader, time is everything, and I feel like it's important to spend that time that you're reading on things that you know that you will enjoy. And I myself find myself in situations like this often where I will read a book and I'm not enjoying it, but I will just like force myself to continue reading it because I want to give it a strong enough chance before I DNF it. And this one is kind of hard for me to get rid of because I did enjoy Grave Mercy, but I didn't love love it. I didn't like die hard love it. I wasn't like eager to get to the next book. And that lack of eagerness has me questioning if I should keep it or not. I feel like the first book had a lot of good qualities, but the negatives are things that I find insufferable with books these days. Like suffocating, aggravating, anger inducing. For example, sluggish pacing and books that feel like they're dragged out for no reason. So sweep or keep? Me acting like you guys don't know what my answer is going to be. It's a sweep. I'm sweeping the series. Why does it pain me so hard every time I sweep? It's because I know there was potential here, but I just need to get rid of it. It's it's, it's fine. We're starting fresh next year, baby. Next up here, I've got the Caraval series. This is about sisters Scarlet and Tella. Scarlet is being set up for this arranged marriage, but Scarlet's dream of seeing this magnificent show of Caraval have finally arrived. Tella and Scarlet head to see this magnificent show, but when they get there, Tella is kidnapped by Caraval's organizer, Legend. It turns out this version of Caraval surrounds Tella, and whomever finds her first is the winner of this big competition that's being put on. Honestly, and this might be a controversial opinion, I don't really know, but I wish Caraval would have been a standalone. And I think it could have worked as one, honestly. But I feel like it came out in a time where we were going through like a trilogy boom. Everything had to be a trilogy. While the end of Caraval obviously leaves the door open for so much more, I feel like I would have liked it to stay a standalone. But maybe that's just because I like standalones in general. That might be the case. I feel like what's going to be the real decision factor for me in keeping it or sweeping it is actually going to be trying to read Legendary, because I haven't even stepped foot into Legendary yet, and I really liked Caraval a lot. I know that there was a lot of criticism surrounding it, and like, I agree with a lot of the criticism, honestly, but I still enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it enough to want to keep reading the series and find out what happens next. So with that information, I don't think I can justify ditching it just yet. I feel like it's still on the table for me if I'm going to keep it or sweep it. For now, I'm going to keep it. I need to make a promise to myself right here and right now. If I start reading Legendary and it's not like landing with me, if I'm not enjoying it, I need to sweep it. It needs to get gone. It needs to get out of here. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys have read Legendary and if you've liked it or not, or if you think it's worth it to read it to make it to the finale. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Next up on my list, I've got Throne of Glass. Ain't no way I'm bringing down all those books from the series and holding them to show them off to you right now. No way. They're all bricks. Not gonna happen. Now, if I have to explain this series, then you must be new here. It's actually wild to think about this series and where it started because it just evolves into something so much bigger than the beginning. But in the beginning, we follow this girl who ends up in this competition to become the king's champion. And then it just like unleashes into something so much bigger. I'm kind of unserious having this in the mix here, but it has crossed my mind. I've gotten all the way to the last book. Like all I have to do is read the last book and I'll be done. But the thing that's holding me back here, the thing that has me questioning my commitment to the series is that I just don't think I can read Kingdom of Ash without rereading the series. And do you know how much time that would take me? So much time, so much commitment. My heart hurts thinking about it. You're telling me that I'll have to relive the pain of these soul crushing books? Excuse me? And I know what you're thinking. Why not just read a recap of the series? That sounds simple, that sounds easy. But I personally never find recaps to be that helpful for me. I need the full punch of it all. I need to study on my own. Summaries of what happened don't work for me. I've tried to get back into Kingdom of Ash a couple of times and each time I've come across characters and I'm like, who are you again? I don't remember you. And that's a problem. That's when I'm like, oh, 
Do I need to reread? Am I going to ditch this series just because of that? No, I'm keeping this series. But I just needed to talk about my reasoning for why I haven't gotten around to Kingdom of Ash. It's because when I start reading it, I'm like, who are these people? I only know like our main crew. I'm gonna keep it, but I feel like I'm gonna have to reread the series in order to like feel the full impact of the last book. We'll see how long it takes for me to like get around to feeling the urge to reread them. It might take a while, but I'll get there eventually. Someday. <laughs> I hate it here. The last one I'm deciding on today is His Dark Materials. I've gone back and forth on this one so many times. I've had a very interesting experience with this series in general. Like I read the first book back in college and I did not like it, then I read it again and I liked it more. I kind of had more of a respect for it after I reread it. I feel like a part of me is missing out because this is such a well-known trilogy. It's very well loved. And while I did gain a better respect for the first book after rereading it, I just, I just don't see it in the cards for me to ever really push myself to read the next few books. I just feel like it's going to be one of those things where it just never happens. Like I don't ever see myself actually pushing myself to read them. And I need to be real with myself here. I need to be real. So keep or sweep, I'm gonna sweep. That's it for Keep or Sweep book series edition. I feel like I made decent progress and there's still a few that are kind of like on the line of like keeping or sweeping. I just need to read the next book in the series and see where I feel or see where I fall. But those next books in those series are going to be major deciding factors on if they stay or if they go. I will keep you guys updated once I get around to them. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments on the ones that I decided to keep and the ones that I decided to sweep. Am I making a mistake? keeping some of these? Am I making a mistake sweeping these? Let me know. I am gonna like stand firm on my decisions here, but some of you guys are just really good at swaying me. So let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. -oh. We're drinking Diet Dr. Pepper today. This is going to be a test to see if coffee is what makes me off my rocker or if I'm just off my rocker in general. I think we all know the truth. Like I like I blah, 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 blah. I can't speak.